showbread in the King James Version. Showbread, in a biblical or Jewish context, refers to the cakes or loaves of bread which were always present on a specially dedicated to crown table, in the temple in Jerusalem as an offering to God. An alternative, and more appropriate, translation would be presence bread. Since the Bible requires that the bread be constantly in the presence of God, it is also mentioned in origin. Although, according to textual scholars, the only source texts among those comprising the Torah are which mention the showbread of the Holiness Code and later additions to the priestly source. The antiquity of the practice is shown by its mention in the books of Samuel which textual scholars generally view as predating the priestly source. In the books of Samuel, Ahimelech is described as asking for an assurance that David's men were in a ritually pure state namely that they had not been involved in sexual activity with women. Before handing over the old showbread, biblical scholars view this as suggesting that the showbread was originally a sacrificial meal which was viewed as being shared with the deity, hence the need to be ritually pure and the bread not being burnt but instead consumed. The custom seems to have been widespread in the region, an example being the Babylonian practice of offering to their gods a number of different kinds of cakes. Bread, the Hebrew term for show bread, lehem hapanim, is exactly translated by the Assyrian phrase akol pinu, which refers to the Babylonian cake bread offerings. In the Israelite case, a number of biblical scholars connect the use of showbread directly to the ancient cult of the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark being seen as the home of the deity, and the bread being an offering of food, ready for consumption whenever the deity chose to make an appearance. Like the biblical showbread, the Babylonians and Assyrians generally laid 12 cakes, loaves, or an integer multiple of 12 cakes, loaves on tables in front of images of their deities, the number 12, which is so prominent in the showbread rite, has always borne mysterious religious significance, and with the Assyrian practice of laying out 12 cakes, loaves, was directly connected with the zodiac. The Babylonian cakes bread were also required to be sweet, and like the biblical showbread were baked from wheat flour. In classical Jewish literature, the somewhat scanty biblical details concerning the showbread are complemented by further information given by Josephus and, over the several centuries after the temple's destruction, by classical rabbinical literature. According to Josephus, the cakes were unleavened and were baked on the Friday before the Sabbath. Since the biblical regulations forbade work of any kind during the Sabbath, the Mishnah argues that the loaves were kneaded separately but baked in pairs. The Mishnah also states that the loaves were molded into shape by three different molds, with one being used while the loaves were just dough, another while the bread was being baked in the oven, and a third after baking. To protect the shape, the Mishnah describes the loaves as being 10 etzba long and 5 etzba wide with rims, horns that were 7 etzba long. Maimonides gives the same figures but with tefer as the unit rather than etzba. According to some Mishnah each contributors, the kneading of the dough was done outside the sanctuary, but the baking was done inside. But others state that all the preparations were carried out in the temple courtyard, and others in the house of Paji which according to Maimonides was very close to the temple courtyard. No reason is given for these geographic distinctions, but the Gemara argues that the house of Garmu were responsible for baking the showbread and kept their methods and reasoning secret. The Mishnah states that to replace the bread, two priests would enter the sanctuary ahead of another four priests carrying the replacement bread. The two priests without the bread would go to the southern end of the table, while those with the new bread would go to the northern end, and while the priests at the south removed the old bread from the table, it would be replaced with the new bread by the priests at the northern side, so that the bread would always be present. 
Josephus states that the cakes were placed in two equal piles, as does the Mishnah, which describes the existence of hollow golden tubes to carry air between the bread, and two golden fork-shaped supports attached to the table, each one to hold up a pile. Josephus also states that the frankincense was placed in two golden cups, one on top of each pile, the Mishnah states that a handful of incense was placed in each cup, and the two Sefta states that the cups, called Bezikon, had flat bottoms, rims, so that they could also be placed on the table. According to the Mishnah, while the new bread was being carried in by the four priests, two other priests would carry in replacement cups of incense, and two further priests would go ahead of them to remove the old cups of incense. The Mishnah argues that after being removed, the old bread was placed on a golden table in the temple's hall, and then the old incense would be burnt. Once this was done, the cakes would be divided, with the Jewish high priest getting five of the twelve loaves, and the remainder being divided among the other priests on duty during the previous week. On the occasion of certain Jewish holidays occurring during the Sabbath, there were adjustments made. For example, if Yom Kippur occurred on the Sabbath, the old bread wouldn't be divided between the priests until the evening. The table The majority of contributors to the Mishnah state that the table was of the same dimensions as the loaves 10 etzba long, and 5 etzba wide, but Rabbi Akiba contributed a dissenting view, according to which there was a gap between the piles of showbread, with the table being 12 etzba long, and 6 etzba wide. Abba Saul argued that the cups of incense were placed within the gap. These dimensions clearly are too small for the loaves to rest on the table lengthways, and clearly some support would have been needed for them to be piled high upon the table in two distinct piles, which is difficult to reconcile with the apparent biblical implication that the loaves were freestanding on the table. The Mishnah states that there were 28 ventilation tubes, 14 for each pile, each of which was open at one end only. The Demara extrapolates from this the conclusion that the fork-like supports were set into the floor, two at each end of the table, and the tubes went between the fork-like supports above the table. The Gemara essentially has the view that the supports and tubes formed a complex receptacle for the loaves, similar to a grate with the lowest loaf in each pile resting directly on the table, but with the next loaf resting on the two lowest of the tubes, and so forth up the pile. Presumably a device as complex as this would have been mentioned at least briefly in the Bible had it been a biblical requirement, but it isn't, and neither was it depicted on the Arch of Titus, which shows the table at the moment of its capture by the Romans as well as the golden cups for the incense, the Mishnah enumerates a number of other dishes and hand-like bowls, including menachiot and kesawat. The kesawat are identified by the Mishnah as being for the wine libations, but the Targums argue that they were for the purpose of covering the showbread. The Mishnah also suggests that the table could be dismantled into small portions, so that if any part of it ever became ritually impure, it could be regain its ritual purity by washing the parts in a mikvah. Among ancient groups, there is evidence of Jewish groups around the turn of the Common Era, such as the Qumran community at the Dead Sea, and the Therapeutare in Egypt, which seem to have regarded themselves as part of the main Jewish body worshipping at the Jerusalem Temple, despite being geographically isolated from it and, in the eyes of later Jewish thought, theologically distinct from it. Among the Dead Sea Scrolls, a number of Aramaic fragments, found in Cave 2, discuss eschatological connections to the eating of showbread, which Matthew Black links with the sacred community meal discussed in a scroll from Cave 1, and the Messianic meal discussed in another scroll in the same cave. Professor Black suggests that the Qumran community may have considered their regular bread sharing to be an enactment of the Sabbath division of showbread at the Jerusalem Temple. There is dispute among scholarly groups as to whether the Qumran community was identifiable with the Asenis. But scholars do generally agree that there was an association between the Asenis and the Therapeutare, 
Philo reported that the therapy Tare's central meal was intended to emulate the holy table set forth in the sacred hall of the temple. But though the Qumran community are portrayed in the Dead Sea Scrolls as viewing the Jerusalem service as having failed to achieve priestly holiness, Philo describes the therapy Tare as deliberately introducing slight differences in the practices from those of the temple, as a mark of respect for the temple's showbread. Bibliography. B. Baranch. Exodus Leviticus. 419. Gottingen. 1900. Riem. Handwater Butch. E. 1405 ASEQ. M. Black. The Scrolls and Christian Origins. Studies in the Jewish Background of the New Testament. M. Barker. Temple Theology. An Introduction. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Jewish Encyclopedia, 1901-1906.